When it comes to the faces that you see on the internet making outlandish post assumptions and absolutely ad hominem driven rage, you just can't help but sit back, relax, and enjoy the absolutely nonsensical drivel that comes out of the mouths of fanboys within Game Facts. We'll be taking a look at the Xbox One section because a good friend of mine, Mr. Crow Press, decided to leave me a link and I think this is the perfect time to react to some stupid comments. We have dumb topic number one. Hate on the Xbox One all you want, but at least it doesn't have this problem of having cockroaches drawn to your PS4. Now granted, if you live in a dirty ass environment with trash everywhere and you're just a hoarder and there's roaches crawling all over your console, there's fucking infestations in your toilet, maybe, just maybe, you want to get a broom one day, clean up all that mess around your damn area, and sort out the problem. It's an easy solution, and I've seen people in the ghetto before have a lot of infestations with rats in the maze, with fucking shit on the ceiling. I've seen it all. But to blame this problem solely on the console, I don't have this problem because you know why? I don't live in an area where there's an infestation. I don't have food and Cheetos and all this bullshit near my PS4. Why would there be roaches in your PS4 if you aren't living in a dirty environment? I think maybe you Xbox fans need to go out there and discover what it's like to actually pick up a broom and dust pan for once because this is a ridiculous post and I think it's definitely a post that warrants flame baiting because it's something about the PS4 in those threads and it's in a negative manner. And it's in a manner where it's so outlandish that you can't even believe someone will say, do you find roach poo in your PS4? What the hell, man? Dumb topic number two, they better let Capcom do Gears of War 5. Horror in Gears of War 4 is good, but the story is at a dead end. They better find a portal to Earth and play with all those sexy women from Resident Evil. Buddy, this is the internet. It sounds like you want some low-grade Resident Evil cosplay porn, which is not hard to find, I'm pretty sure, if you use Google but I doubt you will because your IQ is the size of a cashew. If you use Google, I'm sure you can find this to interest your knees. But saying that the Gears of War story is at a dead end is quite ironic considering the fact that Resident Evil 7 is also like this where they have ridiculous concepts. And if I were to get into spoiler territory, which you can click off this video right now, they have some bullshit plot thread going on where they think that the gamer is so stupid that we don't know that this character claiming to be Chris Redfield is probably not Chris Redfield like we all suspect. So the story is really at a standstill. They tried to go with this new plot of having Ethan find his wife and some bullshit happens with some hillbillies. And I think that Capcom is not best suited for this stuff anymore. I think that Capcom is not the Capcom we used to know back in the 90s and the 2000s where everything that had a Capcom logo on it was just gold. We aren't in the golden age of Capcom anymore. We're in the age now where Capcom will milk and dime you for every single cent on DLC and microtransactions. We're in the age where Capcom will give you incomplete Fighter V and expect you to deal with it not knowing that they have to reap what they sow a lot later on. We're in the age of shit when it comes to Capcom because that's what they are, just a mediocre company now. So why would you want them to do Gears when Gears itself is kind of going on a downward spiral because after Judgment, there was no coming back. Gears of War 4 was okay, but it does not retain its former glory with the original trilogy. This was a terrible idea. Excused! Excused, bitch! Dumb topic number three. I think Microsoft should have kept Connect. It's sad that they had to remove it just to compete with Sony. They should have stuck to their guns because it still has such potential for all types of gamers. 
The device was doing so well and had an audience up until they removed it. The fastest selling consumer electronic means people obviously agreed it was a unique device. The PS4 camera is a cheap Me Too version and could never reach the level Connect achieved. Am I the only one who doesn't give a fuck about these peripherals? Just saying. <laughs> But since you asked so kindly, I will answer your question in a pretty monotone demeanor similar to the original Silent Hill producer Tom Hewlett. You see, the PlayStation has a long lineage of the PlayStation camera that evolved over time. You saw this with the iToy and the PlayStation Eye, then the PlayStation camera that's implemented in the PS4. Now, granted, I don't see where your logic is coming from considering that you have no semblance of reasoning or facts behind your statement considering the fact that the Kinect and the PlayStation camera, so to speak, does not have any good available exclusives on it. So the reason why the Kinect is dead and the reason why the PlayStation camera is not being utilized anymore is because consumers really didn't buy into it as much. Now granted, it might be a good option to have a webcam available if you're into that sort of thing. You like to have some option where you want to be seen and broadcast to the world, but if you buy these devices just for the games, then you're gonna be rudely disappointed. I don't even think they develop Kinect games anymore, so they just pretty much scrapped that idea entirely. And of course, remember correctly, back in 2013, they did have the premise where you needed a Kinect in order for your Xbox One to function, and that actually went through during launch. You needed the Kinect in order for the Xbox One to run, Otherwise, you would have a colossal break on your hands, and that's just not good or fun. Now, is it? Is it? Is it, sir? No. No, it's not. I don't want my fucking console to be connected to a peripheral where the peripheral is needed for the console to work. Do you understand how completely butt-fuckingly stupid that is? I don't like it, and I'm sure... No one else likes it that's a rational gamer that doesn't care for webcam, that doesn't care for the Kinect, and doesn't care to have it. So they got rid of it. It's common sense, it's business. What works does not stay. Do you understand? Good, good, I hope you do. Once again, they have moved on now to VR. And while VR is completely, totally, but fuckingly expensive, I just don't buy into the VR craze, but some people have said that some of the games that have released on the PlayStation VR has been fun. It's been a fun experience, but they don't release games on the regular for it. I mean, if you're going to push some type of hardware, you need the software to accommodate this. Bottom line, if you have hardware that's just all about shovelware and no games releasing, then it's not going to do well with the gamers who want to actually play games on that product and eventually they're going to abandon it or not buy into it in the future. This is how the nature of consoles work. When you have no games, when you have no games, why even buy the hardware? Makes no sense, doesn't it? Yes, it doesn't. Delete! 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 Uh, at the end of the day, I guess Broken Matt Hardy is the real savior because I'm not even going to warrant that idiocy of a comment with the response. But now we have the granddaddy of them all, the mecca of today. We have the community of the Xbox fanatics being riled up and frustrated and furious with rage because a lot of people are claiming that the Xbox One has no games. Anyone getting tired of the no games comments that keep popping up? I swear most of the people that spew the no games statement are just copying and pasting this comment for just something to do or to just stir the pot. Look at the PS4 launch. Barely any games, but all of that is forgiven, right? You trolls do know that E3 is right around the corner, right? I'm not expecting games to come out this summer, but I will suspect that Microsoft is going to announce great games that are in the works. Seriously, are some of you Sony guys a little scared or something? Fam, bruh, Klondike, Little Gangster, 
chain snatching, jive ass, merry comb motherfucker. While admittedly the statement of no games is exaggerated because there still are releases on the Microsoft platform, they just aren't exclusives that are good enough or warrants the purchase of an Xbox One. A prime example is Windows 10. Even though the story isn't that great, the exclusives there are still on that platform. So if you want stuff like Halo and Gears of War 4 and you have a PC, what reason is there to at least buy an Xbox One? Now granted, I had my own personal problems with Gears of War 4 on the PC, but I still managed to get the game to work well, it runs well, and I enjoy it on that platform, so why would I go and get an Xbox One specifically for a game that I can play on my PC? The problem is, Microsoft has a hard time really nailing down exclusives that people want. When it came to that situation with Scalebound, it seems like more games are getting canceled on the Microsoft side of things than more games getting produced on the Microsoft side of things. When it comes to Sony, however, they have a wide variety of games coming out, like JRPGs, for example, that Microsoft does not excel at. They do not excel at marketing those Japanese games. They do not excel at having exclusive deals because every time Microsoft has an exclusive deal, it seems like Sony is just taking the rug under them gradually. We've seen this before with Call of Duty being mostly exclusive content driven on the Xbox One platform, but now the ties have changed and that has migrated over to Sony. And it seems as though those really important marketing deals like Red Dead Redemption 2 and other games are just going on the Sony platform, so they're going to have that advantage when it comes to advertising. Now, the Xbox has a chance to bounce back, but considering the fact that they're working on Project Scorpio, a lot more people are going to be inclined to see what this thing does compared to anything else that the xbox one does because i feel as though if they don't do anything substantial in terms of exclusives for e3 then sony is just going to blow them out of the water yet again and remember microsoft is up first so first impressions are everlasting and i feel that's the real problem with xbox they talk a good game they have good pr with phil spencer right now even though he says some dumb shit but in the end they just can't recapture the gamers because when they first started out and the concept of the Xbox One was talked about, it really hurt them in the long run and it just seems like they're playing second fiddle at the time being. They need to step it up with getting exclusive deals, going bold, getting more varied things on their platform, being the best platform to play on. And they don't have that compared to the Sony brand. Having these nine month droughts are making gamers impatient and I pretty much agree with them. Why would you have a piece of software that's like 500 or $600 with nothing on it? Also, Sony guys being scared. That's cute. You dense motherfucker. If there are good exclusives to play on the Sony platform and things stay the way they are, then why would any PlayStation owner be scared of Microsoft this is why being a hybrid console owner is important or owning more than one platform. I own the PC, I own the PS4, I reap the best of all worlds. While people who are narrow minded to fuel this console war stuck to one platform are just stuck with one console. That technically doesn't have anything to play on it. When Microsoft gets that Last of Us Part 2, call me.